welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it on this Monday morning. And with me to continue to take a look at the issues of our nation and beyond, of course, is still the security expert, Dixon Osaji. Good to have you on this segment sure. again. All right, so we are going to look at a couple of papers this morning. Uh, we have the Punch newspaper, we have the Nation, uh, we have Vanguard, and we'll go to um, this day also at some point. But we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. I believe it will be displayed uh, soon. Aviation industry contributed 0.14% to GDP in 2019. That's according to the Bureau of Statistics there, and that story is on page 31. Now, anti Oshomole forces weakening. Uh, APC, uh, Buhari regime, Tinubi warns. That story is on the front page there, displayed. Uh, but it's, continue. it's actually on page two. Opponents soft pedal to, to offer party national chairman resignation option. Interesting. Eight arrested for killing police inspector in Ogon. Page four, Quara uh, probes civil service to weed out ghost workers on page 10. And the big story you can see there um, on your screen is oil crash. Nigeria may lose $8.63 billion in six months. Uh, recession looms, says LCCI, Nupeng, and Pengason operators canvas deregulation economic policy review. And again, we have the story from yesterday's explosion. Uh, principal and 16 others killed. 50 houses raised in Lagos gas plant explosion. That story is on pages four and five. And Lasso, uh, Vice Chancellor, others beneficiaries of dubious promotions, appointments. And uh, that's uh, Asu official on um, page seven. And fake naval officer arrested for mutilating uh, man's private parts on four and five. What kind of story is that on a Monday morning? Sad. And fire me meets with a laughing over face off with AKT Bonax on page 22. Let's begin this morning uh, again, Dixon, with. The explosion story, I guess. Uh, earlier on, you were talking about critical structures, you know, and how ideally a nation should be able to uh, protect people who are vulnerable, and as much as the critical structures are also vulnerable. In that light, one would wonder why do we have a school? close to a place like that because in fact there was a boarding school and unfortunately the principal is one of uh, the dead now as we speak. Yeah, you, you see, uh, here in our climb we, we don't consider risk, we don't carry out a risk assessment. You know, there are, uh, like talking about the critical infrastructure, uh, you should be able to project uh, necessary uh, risk implications because we just think we can just uh, uh, build our houses, mm -hmm. build a church, even close to hellfire. Some people want to, mm -hmm. you know, build a house, you know, just because they want to live. They don't care about their lives, you know. They don't really know that uh, human lives are irreplaceable. Right. You know? Yeah, if you feel and understand that human lives are irreplaceable, you have value for that. Uh, because uh, we are in our own climb, we have more respect and more zeal for the replaceables, mm -hmm. cars, vehicles, houses. But the human life is irreplaceable. When you're gone, you're gone. And uh, it's quite regrettable that a school is very close to yeah. uh, a, a gas plant. That seems to, that, that is the fault of the government, not the uh, school itself. Uh, because the government should know that uh, uh, within uh, the pipeline, in a matter of 500 meters, there should not be any uh, housing within that area. They should buy the space, you know. Mm. Buying the space is that. Because the truth is that when we talk about fire, you know, fire could be activated through uh, various means. You know, there's what we call the triangle of fire. Okay. You know, we have the fuel, we have the heat, and once the, the, the foiling, the foiling could be uh, material things. When we talk about foil, it could be materials, it could be building, it could be papers, it could be right. wood, you know, it instigates the fire. You understand? So the foil itself is there, then the oxygen, the fire needs oxygen to succeed. Right. You understand? So what the government should have done for the fire not to have that oxygen, they should be able, they should have be able to confine those pipes, you know, so that it will not uh, get more oxygen. Okay, if per adventure there's no way to confine those pipes yeah. or to gain more oxygen, because for fire to ex excel, you, you need oxygen. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when there is fire in the house, you see people, just open the window, open the window, open yeah. the window. You don't open windows when you have fire outbreak. You because when you open windows, uh, the fire will gain more energy and uh, uh, flame up. So you have to shut it down. So the energy, uh, the, the uh, oxygen, I mean to say, uh, gave that uh, outburst uh, 
uh, a magnanimous uh, conflagration. Mm. So what the government needs to do going forward is that it should carry out a risk assessment of our critical infrastructures, uh, infrastructures that are uh, detrimental to the survival of man. You know, mm. any infrastructure that you know that if anything goes wrong, it's going to take human life should be well protected. You don't allow uh, our people to keep dying anytime. But Nigerians will still want to struggle. Yeah, because I was just going to say yes. If the government issues um, maybe ultimatum to these people, you notice that it takes time. Sometimes people refuse to move. Yeah. You know. So is it just the government, or is it our mindset? Do we need a different kind of orientation to make people understand that? You're not doing. You're doing this because it's going to benef be beneficial to you, or you shouldn't do this, you know, because it's going to be beneficial. Yeah, that is where our societal attitude needs to be worked upon. Mm. Uh, we, we really have problem with our attitude here in our own part of the world. You see, a Nigerian man that uh, misbehaves immediately gets to London. He behaves he, well. Oh my God, he comports himself. I, I remember when I went Very to when proper. I went to London, and one of my brother was shouting, hey, "We're just making us." Hey, why did you say, "Excuse me." Must you shout? <laughs> you know, they don't understand that yeah. fact. But here in Nigeria, you know, one will shout, ah, welcome. You know, so we need, we need to work on our attitude. When we work on our attitude, uh, we'll continue to get things very, very properly. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, coronavirus, uh, you heard about us really uh, send a kind of message to the whole world that whatever yeah. we want to do, we can get it right. Imagine mm -hmm. uh, going, going into church, house, house of worship, you sanitize your hand. Going into offices, you sanitize your hand. Immediately I came into this beautiful edifice, the uh, security, security officers gave me hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I sanitized my hands and I asked myself a question. Why is it that this coronavirus has humbled us? <laughs> I asked myself that question. Yeah. And, 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 and I understand that, yes, there is nothing in this world that is not doable. It's doable. Mm -hmm. We can work on our attitude. Coronavirus has humbled us. We're working on our attitude. Now, what is the problem now? What is the, uh, the fact there? The fact there remains that the world has got to know that coronavirus is detrimental to the survival of man. Mm. So you know that at any given mistake, your life will be eliminated. Mm. So we need to take such kind of a view to the human, to the human space and let them know, sensitization now, mm. hey, this pipeline you're building your house, in case there's an explosion, you will all die. Yeah. Are you with me? In case there's any outbreak, you will all die. But if they refuse to move, the government should apply uh, a maximum force to take mm. them out and let them see reasons why using the uh, process of uh, uh, courts to take them out from that vicinity, letting them see reason that uh, uh, it, it, shouldn't is, be here. it shouldn't be here mm. because uh, it's really, really detrimental. And also, our government should look at uh, uh, getting the fireballs. You know, if you go to some advanced country, they have fireballs. You know, fireballs, uh, yes, fireballs uh, automatically, uh, f uh, uh, you know, engage the, the fire, you know, fight the fire or mitigate the, the fire. At least in every 10 meters, we should have a fireball. So that if there's an explosion, the fireball will be able to uh, mitigate uh, that, that, that fire so that it will mm. not be injurious. To so the, the extent, is, uh, yeah. damage, extent of damage is uh, yeah. reduced. Okay, thank you very much for that. All right, let's look at this um, story of a fake naval officer arrested for mutilating man's private parts. We may not go into details of what, what, that, but my point is, how is it that we have fake naval officers? Just two weeks ago, a fake soldier was identified in this country. Is there, is there something in the system that does not allow you know, for due process? Um, what's the process of identification even? Uh, how do I know that this person is a real soldier? Is there no sort of identification? Uh, yeah, you, you're correct. You see, uh, we have a lot of fake soldiers. Uh, uh, in any part of the world, you find people who impersonate. You know, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's, been, he's impersonating. He has been impersonating, and I think he has been caught impersonating. Even in the army, they are impersonating. Even in the Lagos, all, all over Nigeria, we have people who impersonate, and not be, even not even uh, the soldiers. Some people impersonate to be doctor. Mm, Some right. people impersonate to be lawyers. You know, impersonation uh, is an offense we, uh, in which our government are not paying more attention to. Uh, sometimes, uh, I think when I was in the military, I learned that if you impersonate being a soldier. I think it's about uh, life imprisonment or how many years imprisonment. There should, there should be a life imprisonment to people who impersonate to be a soldier because when you impersonate being a soldier and uh, you inflict fear on the, on the citizen, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's criminal mm -hmm. for you to have inflicted Especially fear. Especially for someone like this who yes, was Yes, yes. I, I remembered, and that is why Nigeria needs to question people. You know, don't just, don't just listen to anybody and say, hey, I'm a soldier. Question people. I, I question people. Even if I'm driving and you stop me, you say you're a police officer, with your uniform, I'll question you. Can I see your identity? 
identity card. Uh, last, uh, last uh, I think about uh, two years ago, uh, I was driving. Uh, no, no, I, was, I wasn't driving. I think I was fine. Uh, yes, I was in the market, and I, I saw a guy who was just like, uh, you know, harassing people with a mm. military short nicker. And uh, I, 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 I tried to, uh, you know, respond to the incident, and he shouted at me. He said, "Don't call me. If you call me, I will, I will, I will finish you here." I said, "Please, can I know you?" Mm -hmm. He said, "I'm a soldier. What do you want to know again?" I said, "What NA are you?" He didn't you know, know what to I, I gave him a code. I said, mm. what NA are you? He said, I'm a soldier. You're asking me NA. What is NA? Wow. Immediately I knew he was a fake soldier. Because when I ask him what NA what are you, NA? I'm not going to say not A. Okay. Yeah. Immediately I ask him what NA are you, mm -hmm. I expected him to justify that question by telling me the NA he is. Mm. So I, he didn't respond to that question. I knew he was a fake soldier. I just picked up my phone. I just called the nearest station. I just left there. I went and met, uh, called the nearest station. I think I couldn't get it. And I just drove down to Pedro Police Station. And I said, please, can you follow me? Just an impersonator. Hmm. The person needs to be a soldier. I said, how do I know? I said, I'm an ex-soldier. I brought out my ID card and I showed them my ex-service ID card. Because we are discharged from the military, you have a life ID card that you renew every five years. Okay. As I said, you are an ex-soldier, so you can present before the public being a veteran. So I showed them the ID card. They came and picked up this guy, and the guy was dealt with. So this Nava guy, I think he has done it with a lot of people, hmm. and uh, carrying, uh, injuring someone's uh, uh, yeah. manhood or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's highly injurious, and uh, he's going to pay for it because it should be used as a deterrence measure so that Nigerians will see that impersonation is a very serious crime because we don't take it as a serious crime. We just mm. let people impersonate and they go free. When you impersonate, you should be held accountable and for pay that. for it. All right, let's move away from that story now. Um, eight arrested for killing police inspector in Ubu. Again, that's another case of insecurity. As a Nigerian, no, as, I mean, yes, as a Nigerian, when I see stories like this, I get worried for myself because if... <coughs> if the targets, uh, the police security officers have been targeted, how safe uh, are the rest of us Nigerians who, you know, may not have security details going back and forth with us? Yeah. You see, uh, in the early days, uh, if there's an incident happening in... Uh uh, let me say, um, uh, on the mainland, for example, let me just say Keja, hmm. and uh, we are asked to uh, advance to that location. There's maybe some soldiers from uh, Boni Camp here are asked to go to that location to forestall that accident. Immediately we take off from Boni Camp. I think when they perceive or they hear that soldiers are coming, yeah. they will disappear. Everybody disperses. You understand? The fear is there, disperses. the discipline is there, and uh, the action is there. Now, for uh, people to come up and be killing security agencies tells you that uh, our security agencies are losing values. Why are they losing mm -hmm. values? Uh, they've been monetized. Why are they being uh, monetized? Uh, because uh, most of them have been politicized, I mean to say. Why are they mm -hmm. being politicized? It's because they've uh, refused to uh, remember their core value of being a security officer, of being a soldier, of being a military. I was in a checkpoint one time in 1999 during the Bakasi uh, war, and uh, a, a, a lady was smuggling something in, and she gave me a tip. I, I, I almost went nuts because we were meant to believe that if you are giving a tip as a soldier, it's you, an insult your integrity you. has been abused. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So I still have that mindset. Each time I do anything for any person, when you give me money, I, I feel irritated. But now the, the, the narrative has changed. Our soldiers have... I've been so much politicized. Even if you see the last general election, what went wrong, I was so disappointed. I sent a lot of letters that you have to be very careful because each time you uh, contribute to the spirit of insecurity, you are, you are crediting the account mm. of instability because one day you withdrew from that account. You withdraw from that account. So for this policeman to have been, uh, to, to have been killed, mm. I don't know what led to that incident and uh, what, uh, what, 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 what went wrong. Is mm. it that the uh, eight people were, were, were aggrieved or is it that uh, the police officer, the criminal, Mm -hmm. Or is it that uh, they just intend to send a message to the police because most people just feel they can kill at liberty, kill with uh, uh, immunity? Mm -hmm. And so I think the Nigerian police should uh, look into that very seriously. Mm -hmm. In the early days, when you kill a soldier, the city will be shut down. Yeah, yes, I think I remember there was a time a policeman as well shot a soldier dead. I was in Calabar. We shut down Cross River State. It took the uh, intervention of General Obasanjo for us to. Uh, uh, go back to the base. You don't mm. take human life like that and uh, think you go scot-free. Yeah. So those people should be chased and uh, well punished and uh, 
deterrence measures should be solved. Yeah, before we, we leave uh, the punch to another newspaper, you know, uh, without trying to justify um, tipping, I'm, I'm not justifying that. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying people should go around bribing police officers or security personnel. But again, you know, there have been arguments that if these people are well taken care of, you know, they may not uh, be tempted to look the other way. You know, so again, it boils down to the welfare. Are they being, are they well paid? Do you think a security policemen, for instance, are well paid, starting from the, their vehicles, the way they look like? Are they taken care of? Amaka, there is nothing in this planet Earth that should justify crime I agree. and uh, unethical behavior. I agree nothing with you. justifies that because uh, if uh, there are rules and regulations in place and uh, you justify those rules and regulations by carrying out a criminal act simply because you're not taken care of, it's unprofessional. Uh, we, that must not be justified. Mm -hmm. When I joined the army then, my first salary in my, in my entire life uh, was about 3,000, uh, 3,000, uh, uh, 2,800 naira. That was in what year? That so was in 1998. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, Abacha, uh, General Absalam, came and increased it to about 4,000 naira. We were living fine with that. We were living okay with that. Uh, despite the fact the money was not okay for us, but the discipline was there. Mm -hmm. Now, any soldier, any policeman that goes around taking uh, a bribe right. from everything, I think it's, 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 it's unprofessional of him. Because first of all, you are telling the world that you're not well taken care of, uh, the military is not taking care of you. Okay, like in my own organization, I told, it's my, like my company now, I made it a standard operating procedure that whoever begs on duty is summarily dismissed. I dismiss my security operatives that begs on duty. I take good care of them, and whenever I'm going for that job, I ensure their, 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 their well-being. But mm -hmm. it's a dismissal offense when you beg on duty. So we must look into that, first of all, so that we don't, uh, that's where uh, C finish comes to play. When you mm -hmm. say C finish, as in uh, they don't have respect anymore because yeah. there was a video that went viral some few uh, weeks ago where you saw a police officer being recorded point blank with his identity, trying to oh, ask for money. Oh, okay. Those guys should be arrested, jailed, and sent away because even if you pay some people one million, they will still commit crime. Mm. You understand? That, that is just the truth because it's like, then there was an argument uh, I had with, uh, a debate we have that uh, does unemployment uh, contributes to uh, crime. Oh, it does, but it does not uh, justifies that. Mm. So we must not. Uh, we must understand that yes, uh, crime is crime, wrong is wrong, and uh, evil is evil, and uh, unprofessionalism is unprofessionalism. Mm -hmm. But uh, in moving forward, our government should also uh, look at taking care of these people because it's not everybody that has the mindset uh, to maintain uh, such high speed of uh, integrity mm -hmm. because. Uh,